Welcome to the Redmond Fire Department pre-fire planning training program. Some of you may have noticed when you're riding around town that there's a new button on the MDC that says pre-fire plan. And this is an example from Shoreline Fire, but it shows an example of all the additional information that can be put on the MDCs now. The pre-fire program will center around a SharePoint site. And this is the homepage to the site where you see we have listed all of our stations. So you'll simply select your station and this will take you to your station's homepage. The items you see listed here are the pre-fire plans. You'll see the pre-fire plan number, the name of the occupancy, and the status. Now the program is going to go in phases, and phase one starts with the pre-fire plans that we already have in the system. And your job will be simply to verify the information that has already been gathered. For these pre-fire plans, you'll see the status listed as needs verification. Click on the pre-fire plan name and it will bring up a PDF of the completed pre-fire plan. Here you can see what the completed pre-fire plan looks like. It starts with a plot map. Down below you have all kinds of additional information such as specific information about the building, EMS access point, suppression locations. At the bottom of the document is a satellite view and this shows very specific information such as stair locations with roof access and all other related building features. After you verify all this information is correct and current, click on the edit icon and that will bring up this dialog box. You can see it's in need verification status. All you need to do is click station review complete and save. Once you accomplish that, the pre-fire plan will be loaded into our MDCs ready for use. Now phase two gets a little more involved and this is where you're actually going to create the pre-fire plans for use in our MDCs. So when you log into your station homepage, you look under status, you may see one that says assigned. What that means is it's been assigned for you to complete. So click on the pre-fire plan, and this time it will bring up a blank pre-fire plan. This is the plot map and information page and the satellite view. So go ahead and print that out and take it to the site with you. Also in your stations, you'll have a pre-fire visitation packet, and that will include the new legend that the pre-fire plan and the mapping group has gotten together and condensed and compiled. And these are the appropriate symbols you should be using. And you also have a form that you'll be using to fill out the information on the occupancy during your visit. Now most of this information is common sense, but there are a couple things I'd like to bring your attention to. One of which is direct mode or emergency responder radio repeater building. Now during these pre-fire visits, it's a good idea to keep a radio with you and test for reception, perhaps by scanning and listening to dispatch one, because fire prevention needs to know about any building that requires direct mode in order to communicate, because that building is required to install or update their repeater system because we shouldn't ever have to use direct mode. And now we'll do a quick walkthrough of a pre-fire plan visit we did at Sears Auto Center. A pre-fire plan can coincide with area fam as well as training activities. Now when you approach building management, it's a good idea to let them know this is not a fire safety inspection and we're not looking to cite violations. This is simply to assist us in best serving them in an emergency. While you're walking through the building, discuss various features of the building with your crew. Look at things like roof construction, high piled storage, unusual fuel loading, access and egress points such as stairs, elevators. Also make sure you're marking roof access locations, electrical panels and shutoffs, and any other information you can gather such as forcible entry concerns, unusual layouts, that kind of thing. Now when you're providing this information, there's actually very specific verbiage you need to use in order to be compatible with the CAD system. So when you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see an area that says acceptable answers. And it's important that you answer these questions along these guidelines. For example, number of stories or number of below grade floors. For example, for a three story building, you need to write the number three as opposed to the word three. Some of these are just yes, no answers. And this area at the bottom is just showing some examples of answers. Now, building construction and roof construction get a lot more specific. For building construction type, we need to be very specific and use the predetermined terminology that is shown on this list. So it may take a bit of investigative work on your part. When looking at roof construction, it's not always evident just by looking at the ceiling. You may need to get on the other side of insulation or drop ceiling. It also helps to get on the roof and take a look from the top. And the acceptable answers for roof construction type can get a little tricky too. There's a lot to choose from, so we're enlisting the folks at the truck company since roof work is kind of their world and we've designated a person from each shift to be the contact point. On A shift, we have James Elric, 
B shift Tony Owens and C shift Travis Sophie. So if you're unfamiliar with the roof construction or you have any questions, please take detailed photographs of it and send it to your shifts representative and they'll get back to you with an appropriately worded answer. When you're filling out these forms, it's okay to handwrite the information in. Just make sure it's somewhat legible. After you've compiled all your information, simply stick it in an inner office envelope and send it to me at FD12. After you've done that, once again, click the edit button. You'll see here it still says assigned. Then simply click station review complete and save. So once your form's complete and it's loaded into CAD, it will go from looking like this to like this and from this to this. Now here's the true beauty of the digital pre-fire plan. Unlike paper map and geocode books, any changes or updates that need to be made occur digitally. So instead of making a bunch of handwritten changes department-wide and waiting a couple years for the new version to come out, all you have to do is print the current pre-fire plan, draw in the change, and send it to me for a nearly instant update. Now here are a few tips to help you be successful during the pre-fire planning phase. Now when it comes to filling in the symbols, it's important that you don't just copy what you see in the geocode onto the pre-fire plan, because as you can see here at Marymore Self Storage, we've got an enunciator, a Knox key, and a sprinkler riser all kind of piled on top of one another, and it's hard to tell exactly where they are. On the much more detailed pre-fire plan, these items are put in the more accurate locations, making them easier to find. The Muslim Association of Puget Sound is an excellent example of a well-done pre-fire plan. Go ahead and draw out the locations, names, and numbers of various rooms within the building. That way, if dispatch tells us a detector was tripped in the cafeteria, we'll know exactly where we need to go and how to get there before we even arrive on scene. Another example I want to show is if you're doing a pre-fire plan of a complex of buildings as opposed to an individual occupancy. When you're describing these complexes, it's okay to describe the complex as a whole, such as dry standpipe at each building, uh, Knox box only on building A, that kind of thing. Now the satellite view of a complex of buildings will only show one building, and you'll see at the top the letters TYP, and that means that this is typical of the buildings in the complex. And this example shows an excellent way to number floors. You see it's a three-story building with an asterisk taking place of the floor number. For example, if we were going to unit 206, we would go to floor 206, and this is our unit. Something to be aware of, though, when looking at pre-fire plans for complexes is you should avoid trying to designate geographical sides of the building, such as if I looked at this one and said the stairwells are on the east and west side of the building, You'll see that in this example, that really only applies to building J and building B. I'm calling this phase three, but this is really just a highlight of how to get new pre-fire plans generated. One is you could be out and about, perhaps on a call, and come across a building you don't have a pre-plan for. And you can simply contact me and request a blank pre-fire plan template that you can then take back to the occupancy and fill out to generate a pre-plan. Another way a new pre-fire plan can be generated is with new building construction. When a new building is complete, before it's occupied, they need to file for a certificate of occupancy, which goes through fire prevention. As soon as they file, that will automatically ping the pre-fire plan program to generate a blank template to create the pre-fire plan. That was a lot of information. I hope it all made sense. If you have any questions,